Yeah, I want to talk about niacin, some of the health benefits for niacin. Actually, some of them are um, best for psychiatric disorders, and I know this is something that is not per the mainstream medical community, but there's a number of studies that back it up many decades. Um, actually, I was taking uh, this type of niacin. niacin. It's, a, it's a flush-free type, and this is really the wrong type. And this is usually the type you find in every single, um, niacin is also known as B, vitamin B3, but this is the type you find pretty much in every single supplement out there. This is the true niacin, and um, it will give you a flush. This is a 500 um, uh, milligram version, and what I do is I break these in half, because if you, I took one of these on an empty stomach one time, and I was like, whoa, baby, it's like on fire. So I break them in half and I take them like that during the day. But there's a number of benefits behind it. Actually, they showed studies where it can reduce uh, heart attacks by 90% if you take enough of it. Now, I'm taking probably two or three grams of it a day. That's what I'm doing. But there's also a type that's the true niacin that's a time-released. And probably not a bad idea, but... Uh, one of the things is, I just want to point out that they have showed studies with schizophrenia and niacin, and it showed to be very effective on schizophrenia. In, the word, in other words, it was taken a few grams of it, divided up during a day in 250 milligram doses. Um, that is not prescribed, though. It's not prescribed maybe because it's not profitable, but then there's another field out there they call the orthomolecular medicine or orthomolecular psychiatry, a term coined by Dr. Linus Pauling in 1968. But as far as niacin, the type you should be taking is the actual true niacin, not the flush-free type. And, you know, if if I take it, uh, if it's a 500 milligram tablet, I know they come in different sizes, there's 200 milligrams, 100 milligrams. If it's a 500 milligram tablet, I split it in half. And I take the one, and I try not to take it on an uh, empty stomach. Even then, I can feel the flush. But it's not that bad if I split it in half. If I take a whole one, it's quite a bit. Now, um, but besides the psychiatric benefits, though, there's also a lot of cardiovascular benefits. And some of the cardiovascular benefits are it will normalize cholesterol. If your cholesterol is too high, it'll bring it down. If your cholesterol is too low, it'll bring it up. If your... Um, HDL, the high density cholesterol, is low. It'll, it'll bring up the HDL, the good cholesterol, and it'll lower the bad cholesterol, the LDL. Nothing does that, like no statin will do that, period. It just doesn't do that. Now, why the reason some people, you know, some of the, you know, there's theories out there. I'm just going to say they're theories because, you know, the experts can be arguing left and right with each other, and I'm just going to present the information. But there's theories out there that people, a lot of people with psychiatric disorders actually have a nutritional deficiency many times. Now, it could be because of traumatic experience, maybe something else, I don't know. But, you know, I'm not playing like expert here. But there's a lot of back and forth as to, some people say the nutritional deficiency uh, theory is garbage. And some people say, no, it's very solid and the evidence backs it up. Now, the thing is, with the nutritional deficiency, why certain people would possibly have a nutritional deficiency in um, niacin is, well, see, your body can produce its own niacin, too. It can take it from amino acids, and also um, it's in conjunction with vitamin B6 that it'll help produce the niacin in the body. Your body can actually produce it if it has the right amino acids available in vitamin B6. But some people do not produce there's different capabilities in different people. So some people might require more supplementation of niacin. And maybe that's possibly why they got, you know, the mental disorder. So here's another interesting caveat, though. They found that some of the people that were in the concentration camps in World War II during the Holocaust time, that um, higher doses of niacin that were given to these people helped bring up their health to par again because one year in a concentration camp basically will age you five years that fast and they were, they had a number of health problems after being you know escaping and getting out of that situation 
but niacin, higher dose of niacin helped uh, alleviate some of those, a lot of those problems and help restore health. Now that's probably something interesting because you know maybe some people think they're under stressful conditions or whatever the heck it is. You know maybe niacin can help you out. I also want to mention something here. A very simple thing is actually sunlight. Sunlight. Um, you know, I know it produces bio, um, beta endorphins. I know it produces vitamin D in your skin, which is very good for your immune system. But I, the science doesn't actually know. I'm sure there's a lot of things yet to be discovered of what the benefits of sunlight are. I know they found out, yeah, it produces beta endorphins. And everybody feels a little bit better a lot of times when you're out in the sun. As long as it's not like you're out in the sun baking for all day and you're like, oh, wow, I'm getting clobbered by the sun. But a little bit of sun, everybody feels better by more refreshed by going outside, especially when you're inside a lot. A lot of people are always indoors, like uh, in offices, in a, in, um, you know, in a workplace, whatever they're at. You know, they're always inside all the time, you know, from morning to night, and they never get outside, and except maybe on a weekend. You know, and probably that's why the batteries seem like they recharge on a weekend, because they get outside a little bit. But um, sunlight is one of the best things you could do. But you can also buy artificial sun lamps. You can buy high-intensity natural light lamps. You know, um, uh, lizard lamps. Lizard lamp is actually a cheap way of buying a sun lamp. It actually, if it's about six inches away from your skin, you'll get some of the benefits of like true sunlight. And it's a cheaper way because a lizard lamp bulb is about I don't know, fifteen, twenty bucks, or maybe even less than that sometimes. And as long as it's not in an enclosed um, fixture, it'll last. Which when you put the bulb in an enclosed fixture, the, the heat tends to burn it up a lot faster. But um, that's that's something you can do. Actually, and a lot of times people have the seasonally affected uh, uh, psychiatric disorder like depression because you know there's a lack of sunlight or good direct sunlight like in the winter time because the angle of the sun is at such an acute angle that. It, the sun's light is coming to us very obliquely, and it affects the psyche of the mind. So those are things that are very cheap to do. Actually, the solariums way back when, besides uh, being solariums, which is people back in the 20s, you know, they call this almost like nonsense today because now they got the drugs to do. But, you know, the sun is free. The sun is free. You know, I mean, you don't want to do excessive amount, but, you know, there's a lot of benefits you get from the sun, and I'm sure there's a lot of benefits they have not measured yet. Actually, indirect sunlight, not, you know, not pure, obviously, you don't want to even be staring at the sun, obviously, but indirect sunlight going into the eyes and the retina has beneficial effects too. Just when you're outside and you see the daylight, that has beneficial effects to the mind and the body. You know, so the thing is that um, those are cheap things to do. And you notice that's really why people, like even when they go in hospitals, they get worse because their vitamin D production goes down because they're indoors. They, they're not getting supplements, obviously. They don't ever prescribe supplements in hospitals, right? Uh, and if they do, it's probably the plant-based type D2. And, you know, the thing is they're not getting this, the good effects of the sun. Back in the day, the solariums used to put, like, not just uh, the tuberculosis patients out there, the influenza patients out there in the sun to get some sun to help vitamin D production and they knew something was going on, they didn't know everything, they knew vitamin D was going on but they, there's other things going on there too but also it's good for the psychiatric patients but you know what, they don't do that they don't do that ever, right? but you know, you as an individual and say for instance you're um, I'm not going to tell people not to take their medication or something because I personally think, well I have a very bad opinion of like a lot of the you know, the psychiatric profession. I do. I think they're they're consciously doing something evil. That's my personal opinion. Um, but if you do, you know, if you're on this thing where you're taking these medications all the time, and you can't get out in the sun because you know you're always inside doing work or whatever the hell it is, or you're just not you're in an area that's in a more northern latitude, and, and the sun won't do you much benefits from like say October to March. What you want to do is get a sun lamp or a lizard lamp, which maybe is cheaper than a sun lamp, might cost you $300. A lizard lamp might cost you 20 bucks. You know, the ones for reptiles, reptiles. And, you know, use that for maybe 20 minutes a day and see if it helps your mood and your psyche out. It probably will because, you know, a lot of people have sworn that it has done quite a bit of a good. 
But the other flip side of it also is the niacin. And you know, there's a theory out, I'll just repeat that again, that some people, you know, I know people in general, they can produce the own niacin in their body as long as they have the B6 available, another vitamin, and the right aminos, and they can produce their own niacin. But some people are um, not capable of doing that very well. And what that means is that they'll be short niacin. And you know, there's a theories out there by other people in orthomolecular psychiatry that um, niacin, they're short niacin, that's why they have schizophrenia. And they have shown where studies where they went on for maybe three months, four months, where 80% of schizophrenic patients were basically knocked out all their symptoms, they didn't need any tranquilizers or anything like that after mega dosing with niacin in small doses of 250 milligrams divided up during the day and getting like several grams during the day total. They did 250 milligrams. 500 milligrams was too big. 250 milligrams is more effective. But if the study kept going for say a year or six months or nine months, it might have been of instead of 80% of them were uh, recovered, it might have been 90%, 95%, 98%. But then I want you to notice, and I don't know if I should put this video out or not because I don't know. I mean, it's going to be, you know, I mean, if you tell the truth on something, it's not, you know, revenue, uh, revenue enhancing. Uh, with, with some people, it's not going to be, you know, it's, it's, it won't help me in any way, that's for sure. But the thing is, I want to put the information out because I'm putting it out in a very succinct form. I've read about this for a number of years, and I was actually reluctant about putting this information out because I figured I was going to get attacked too much. But um, the hell, I'm going to put it out. True niacin in small doses is very beneficial for not only psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia, but if you don't have that, it's also very good for protecting against heart attacks. They showed a 90% reduction in heart attacks. He also showed um, normalizing cholesterol and also bringing up the good cholesterol and lowering the bad cholesterol. Uh, it also dilates the capillaries and things like that. And um, also you get a lot of benefits just from the plain sun, which is dirt cheap too. But basically that's free. And if you got to pay for the sun, you go, you go the route of the lizard lamp or reptile lamp because it's a lot cheaper than buying um, specialized uh, solar producing equipment. It seems that you know they take the same technology to apply to your your pet lizard or reptile that requires UV radiation, UVA and UVB and UV radiation, uh, sunlight radiation. I meant to say sunlight. Is that um, you will pay a lot less money when it's for a pet reptile or lizard, and it's basically the same damn thing. So I just want to tell you that, so maybe I could save you a couple bucks. And I don't sell for Puritan or nothing. I bought this from Puritan. I don't know where the hell I got this from. This was, you know, I was looking for some time release stuff because this is actually, uh, these are, uh, this is a pretty big bottle, 1,000 of them, <laughs> 500, millig 500 milligrams, but they're time release, so you don't really feel that flush too much, but it's a true niacin. It's a, it's a true, that's the kind you want. You want the flush type. And you want to make small doses of it. But, you know, if you want to look into this, look up uh, orthomolecular psychiatry, orthomolecular medicine, and look at what the benefits of niacin are. And there's a number of benefits out there. And, uh, well, just as anything, it's not uh, patented medicine. So you're not going to hear from it too much from the professionals. I'm a non-professional, but that does not mean I do not have a brain that can use logic and you know, ascertain the facts and see probably what the best course of action is. And this is the course of action I take because I think it's the best for health. 